Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 19th, 2016. I'm David Knight. We're going to be joined by Alex Jones in the next segment, and we have a lot of news as well. I don't know if you've noticed these stories that have been going up on the Drudge Report. Last several days, I've seen an ominous trend. First, we've seen the Obama budget saying, well, you know, we need to come up with a plan to fight ISIS. Hey, I got one. Let's reduce the size of the army next year by 40,000 troops. <laughs> okay, but then it gets stranger if you're starting to look at this. Then he comes out and says, um, well, we're going to hire military leaders, not just rank and file, but military leaders. We're going to bring them in laterally. We're not going to let them go through military training or West Point or anything. We're just going to bring in the leaders straight from the private sector because they've got some expertise that we need. You realize that is a very dangerous process. I think it's a very dangerous thing to have a standing army, but we don't want to have a standing army that is going to be so easily malleable. Add to that the fact that the House has now rejected a, an effort to ban illegal immigrants from military service. Now, we've had people who earned their citizenship in the past because they had special language skills or special technical skills or whatever. But what the Obama administration is trying to do now is trying to use the DREAMer Act. People who have come across the border simply because they want a free education. Just having people that are part of that act, the DREAMers, you know, the same ones you see rioting at all the Trump rallies, flying Mexican flags, saying, let's make America Mexico again. He wants to make those people go straight into the military. So we cut the size of the military down by 40. We bring in people who are illegal immigrants. We bring in people who have not gone through regular training as military leaders. Does this sound like the National Civilian Service Army that Obama was talking about? Remember, we got everybody so concerned about that. Remember that? Is this how it plays out? I don't know. We're also going to talk about what's going on with Brexit. Again, we see now that uh, the people who want to remain in, the bankers, the large multinational corporations, the politicians that are part of this globalist movement, are celebrating in the wake of this woman dying. And they're not celebrating. They're, they're, they're crying tears. They're, they're mourning. But these are crocodile tears. We saw over the weekend, we're seeing a dramatic reversal in the poll numbers here. We're going to look at this because I think this is a classic false flag. It stinks to the high heavens. All the signs are there, including the Southern Poverty Law Center being right there immediately with receipts from a tiny, obscure neo-Nazi group in the United States saying he bought weapons from us going back 16, 17 years ago. They had those records just like that. This group is basically defunct. It's being run by a former special forces guy. All of these operations are for the, the people who are living out of the basement, who are mentally defective, like this guy, and the FBI and the COINTEL people who run them. It's been that way for a very long time. And all of his neighbors are saying, I don't know. This is so out of character with him. You know, he, he wasn't a racist. He wasn't even political. I'm surprised that he could even think about anything like this. This guy was just into gardening, and he was a mental patient. And he talked about all the medications that he took and how therapeutic it was for him to be a gardener. And then all of a sudden, he turns into this killing monster. We've seen that type of thing in the United States before. We know what happens with SSRI drugs, especially if you take somebody off of them, reduce their dosage, give them a placebo, whatever. What if you... Train them a little bit. We've had the CIA working on NK Ultra for 60, 70 years since they ended uh, World War II. They've been working on this stuff. Look, this has all the hallmarks of a successful false flag. The worst part about it is the good people in Britain are allowing themselves to be tarred and feathered as racists who have absolutely nothing to do with it, just as honest gun owners in America are being blamed for the hate of this Muslim shooter. And we're told that we have to give up our guns because of the narrative. Now, we're also going to be talking in the second hour to Paul Craig Roberts. He believes that that shooting is a false flag. Certainly, there's a lot that is very interesting about that. The fact that the psychiatrist who said she vetted him said, I wasn't even in Florida at the time. And, of course, she was. this was paperwork coming from the world's largest private security firm. This security firm was one of the bases that was quoted by the FBI for saying, well, that's one of the reasons we shut down those four investigations for him, because he's vetted. You know, everybody's it's a circular vetting process. Stay with us. Alex Jones is going to be joining us in the next segment. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 19th, 2016. I'm David Knight, and joining us from the road is Alex Jones. Alex? 
David, it's great to be here listening to your first five-minute intro. There's so much to talk about. I discussed this uh, some on Thursday, and I discussed this some on Friday, but there have been new communiques uh, issued uh, by different members of the German government and by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. As you know, starting last Thursday, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization uh, in its 60 plus year history has never put out a statement as broad, as bold, or as dangerous uh, as their statement claiming that any cyber attacks, any hack attacks that they believe are coming from the landmass area originating uh, on the internet from Russia or any Russian held territories will be seen as physical acts of war against any NATO member nation or NATO itself or the United States for that matter, which of course is a signatory and one of the founders of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And obviously I, I'm not pro-Russia or pro-NATO. I'm pro-human being uh, and, and not having a nuclear war. But NATO has become a global army. NATO has been allied publicly, it's been allied longer, but publicly with Al-Qaeda, with Al-Nusra, with ISIS, uh, for really more than a decade. And they've been using it as a proxy army in Libya, in Syria, in Egypt, in Iraq, and countless other areas. Uh, NATO's been caught trafficking narcotics. Uh, NATO is really, uh, at the end of World War II, what the German power state and all the Nazi money did merging with the West. It was an extension of what you could call something like Operation Paperclip. Now, I'm not saying the New World Order is a Nazi conspiracy. I'm simply saying th it's an inculcation of those different Nazi uh, and collaborator intelligence networks with Western intelligence networks under an OSS slash CIA 1947 National Security Act umbrella. And it's been operating above the law ever since. We know that Bilderberg meeting at the uh, a hotel there uh, in Oosterbeck, Holland, the Bilderberg Hotel, where they get their name in 1954, was only an extension of NATO meetings that were already being held in secret with private corporate directors previous to that. So it is the heart of the world government project, and it's sucking the energy, the money, the livelihood out of all the different member states that are in the EU and controlled militarily by NATO, which is the UN Army. And so it's a very parasitic organization. So when we hear NATO wants to start a war with Russia, regardless of any problems Russia has or any geopolitical activities they may be involved in, Russia is not one one hundredth, and I mean that conservatively, one one hundredth uh, the threat to human life uh, than the globalist Anglo-American world government eugenics-based project. And so those stories uh, from Zero Hedge and from Infowars and from many other publications are up on Infowars.com right now. And have links throughout it to mainstream newspapers in Europe and from governmental statements. We can all obviously go over some of those with top German ministers and others coming out and saying, look, uh, this, you know, these latest statements by uh, NATO are, are boot stomping, they're warmongering, these are quotes, uh, and are extremely dangerous and endanger everyone's uh, stability. British troops, U.S. troops, other real combat troops, German troops have been massing in different areas along the Russian border. They are moving uh, armaments in from Ukraine to Poland uh, to other areas. This is very, very dangerous. We saw a probing of Russia in, in, in 2008 on the, on the kickoff of the Olympics when uh, tens of thousands of uh, Georgian troops, NATO-backed, attacked South Ossetia and Abkhazia, two historically Russian-held areas on the Georgian-Russian border, wiping out all the Border Patrol troops at those facilities, murdering everyone as an elicited uh, event to trigger uh, the, the Russians pouring in. And, and then our media ran with the hoax that the Russians had actually invaded Georgia. I mean, I actually went on there and said, Russia has invaded Georgia. This is crazy because I was still believing CNN. I mean, I knew they lied, but I could never imagine, David, that they would lie at that magnitude. So there is a lot going on. It, it, it'd be like saying, you know, that uh, the United States attacked Tokyo uh, on uh, December 7th, 1941 at Pearl Harbor. It's just an inversion of the facts. Just like we see on every other case, it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And then meanwhile, we have our reporters all over the country from Phoenix, Arizona to Dallas, Texas in the last few days getting over-the-top video of people with huge Mexican flags and signs saying, let's make America, Mexico again, and let's make USA, Mexico again, and the media actually saying, how dare Donald Trump supporters not want to make the Southwest Mexico? 
when it had you know a bunch of different flags. You know, six flags of Texas. There were actually eight flags over Texas, but you know, Mexico couldn't hold it. Spain couldn't hold it. France couldn't hold it. On and on and on. It's just that there's this whole idea that America is bad, America is evil. All of this is being pushed by globalists, so we'll give up our sovereignty. And that's why the New World Order hates Russia so much, is because Russia is paying down its, its, its international debt to the IMF and World Bank at the fastest rate of any major nation. Russia is paying people to have kids. Russia has national news shows that even our media says are like Alex Jones with a national TV show. Putin's best buddies like an Alex Jones and claims fluoride gives you brain damage and don't take the vaccines and, and that they're chemtrailing everybody and they're geoengineering and, and Putin's best buddies all have people. You know what? It's amazing that Russia has actually found out about the world government, found out about the new world order because the communist Bolshevik program was run out of London and New York declassified over 100,000 conscripts, basically hired, not conscripts, but happy uh, you know, folks to be funded as mercenaries to, who, who were former Russian immigrants, many of them Jewish, to be shipped into Russia in 1917 with Lenin's train and Stalin's train of gold with $25 million of U.S. gold on board to fund the Bolshevik overthrow of Moscow first. It took them years to get control of the rest of the country, but once they got control of Moscow, they had control of the newspapers, they killed the czars, and they put in all the newspapers, turn your guns in and we'll give you amnesty. Well, when the military and others and the citizens turned their guns in, what they got was murdered and put in forced labor camps. So they traded out one form of slavery for something far worse. And so it's very important to understand that we shouldn't be enemies with Russia, in my view. And, and, and the globalists are allied with China, who is actually taking over the Panama Canal and our deep water ports and has our missile secrets and has taken most of our jobs and tells Hollywood what movies can come out and uh, lectures us all day long on, about if, if we can have Donald Trump or not. I mean, China is a billion, 300 million people. Its people are slaves. Its people are in continued uprising against it. Uh, it's in our business. It has 97% of rare earth minerals under its control. It's got military bases all over the world, over 100 of them now. Russia's got three. Russia is not the threat. Russia's broken away from the world government project. It's got its own corruption, its own problems. But the new world order wants to take it down because it's already got a deal with China and others. And it wants to be able to go in and, and, and have the same type of social engineering in Russia, they've had here to cut off the population growth, uh, which they've actually obviously had negative growth there, but Russia's trying to fix that, and to put them under the same family killing process that we're now under uh, in this country. I also want to talk about some of the latest attacks on Donald Trump. Uh, we have some videos coming up of, uh, I mean, I played some of it on Thursday, but just this amazing man in Atlanta, uh, this black man yelling at another black man who's a Trump supporter. You know, saying, how dare Donald Trump, you know, he wants to ship the Africans back to Africa. Uh, and then meanwhile, this, 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 this man's wearing a rainbow flag uh, button and talking about how Trump hates the gays when it's Hillary Clinton uh, that is getting $100 million from Gulf War states that kills homosexuals just for being gay. And then at the same time, they're all running around angry, angry at Donald Trump uh, because he says people should have a right to defend themselves and be armed. And now even the NRA has come out and said, well, we don't agree with Trump that, who we've endorsed that you should be able armed in a nightclub. The point is they had an a, 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 a armed security guard who ran off. The point is it took the, the, the SWAT teams three hours to get there. If you had folks armed in bars, would there be some problems? Yes. But someone armed in a bar is going to happen regardless if they're planning something bad. So I'm not even saying arm the bars. But, but you have to understand that it leaves it as a vacuum for the shooters to come and target you because the stupid SWAT team takes three hours to get there. And that's the reality on that front. But as people discover, the reason they're demonizing Trump is his simple nationalism. Uh, it, it's really a big deal. So there's this and a lot more today. I'm only going to be here for one more segment, spending some time with the family. Also going to be shooting some more reports on the road. Then I'll hand the baton to David Knight and more. It's a big jam-packed global transmission on this Sunday edition, Infowars.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here on this Sunday, June 19th, 2016. I'm here live in Austin. We have Alex Jones joining us now live from the road. Alex. That's right, and I'm going to be here just for one more segment and hand the baton to David Knight, but I'll be hosting the broadcast here from the road tomorrow, <clears throat> 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, co-hosting uh, with David Knight and others. Uh, but the big issue, obviously, is <clears throat> the globalists have taken the gloves off they're moving their program for world government into overdrive right now, and we now have hundreds 
of different publications coming out from Rolling Stone to the Associated Press saying it's time to ban guns, it's time to repeal the Second Amendment. So they've gone from denying this for decades, even though when they get control of a country, the globalists take the guns, or they get, get control of a city, they take the guns, or they get control of a state, they take the guns. They've always denied they want our guns, despite the fact that overall shooting deaths since 1992 are down almost 60% or more, depending on which number you look at from the FBI. Despite all of that, they are coming for our guns as they get more bodyguards and build bigger fences and armored compounds around government buildings. Uh, people like Lynch at the Justice Department and, and people like Johnson uh, at the Department of Home Security. When, they, when they're protected by taxpayer-paid bodyguards, they know they're dominating their slaves. It's an act of supreme control. Uh, to take your security away and not let you protect yourself. So Lynch, a partial transcript of Orlando 9-11 calls will have references to Islamic terrorism removed. Uh, and so what is Homeland Security doing to taking control of Orlando's 9-11 call system and saying we're going to remove him, saying I pledge allegiance to ISIS, I pledge allegiance for you know, you know, know, Islam, uh, this is why we do this. They won't even let us hear the so-called martyr, uh, Matin, tell us why he did it. Because we're not allowed to be told that. I mean, the police already did their job and told us, no, he pledged allegiance to ISIS and called him to the 911 tapes. They told us about 10 hours into it on that Sunday because they knew the media was covering it up and saying that he was a, you know, basically a right-winger or something and not telling you he was a Democrat. And so now they don't want you to hear him, though, in his own cool, calm, collected voice, reportedly, on the 911 tape, uh, bragging about uh, what he was doing and why he did it. So his declaration of why he attacked us, his declaration of war, you're not allowed to hear, because it's emblematic of you not being allowed to know there's been a declaration of war against you. Because they're just going to let these people in and let them come in here and radicalize folks that are already here and attack and then take our liberties. I know I've talked about that a lot, but this is so again, thematic or just highlights everything uh, we're talking about and dealing with, with totalitarian government uh, allied with totalitarian Islam. And it's totally incompatible with Renaissance Western civilization. And that's exactly why they're bringing these people in. It's why they're accelerating the death of the family. You know, this is Father's Day. That's why I took the weekend off and the next few days off partially to spend time with my children and to take them fishing and, you know, play in the sand and things like that. Because I do understand that at the end of the day, we're really going to change the world at the cellular level politically, making our families better, spending time with our children, informing them about how the world really works uh, so that they can't just be brought up by the state and brought up by their smartphones and brought up by this system that's designed to make them totally independent on the state. And I just think about how the government has gotten involved in the relationships of men and women, how they've turned us against each other, how they've tried to make society as handicapped uh, financially as possible so that people don't feel like they have money to have children anymore. And so the individuals that are out there are just totally alone and, can, and are only allowed to organize into tribal units uh, under state-sponsored or corporate-sponsored systems that are really false, that are really prosthesis that don't even work, that are that are artificialities that are designed to be unfulfilling. Because what the New World Order is building is so alien uh, to normal human development. I mean, think about how far humans have come in just the last thousand years. The things we do today would be total magic or the thing of the gods, the, the, you know, the stuff of Mount Olympus or, or, or Thor's, Thor's great tree of the world to ancients a thousand years ago. And, and imagine where we'd be going with technology in the future if it was based on free market, if it was based on free will, if it was based on independence. That would build a very empowered futuristic society that would still have major hurdles to get over, you know, not destroying ourselves with mishaps or accidents or wars. But with the globalists taking technology and bending it and twisting and pouring their menace and their hatred into everything they do with these Trojan systems, they are forming a system that is absolutely and totally designed on every front to dehumanize us. And there's tons of news today to cover.
It's just at the end of the day, this is dehumanization we're seeing, and, and one of the final visible pieces of that is taking firearms from individuals and saying you're less worthy, you're less free, you're less equal than some government bureaucrat or some rich person who can hire private security. You, the individual, aren't trusted and aren't allowed to defend yourself. You're not trusted with something that has power. And then next, it's not going to be guns. It's going to be cars. Cars must be robot-driven and controlled because you can't be trusted. They're already saying that. I told people that 20 years ago. Oh, you can't be trusted in your own home. we got to have social workers come at birth and throughout your life and have a state-appointed third parent. This is all being announced as well, uh, that micromanages everything. This is the parasites in government and corporations that are corrupt merging with a whole AI system to, 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 to birth a new creation uh, here on this globe, a, a, a system meant to prop up uh, a tyranny the likes of which this planet has absolutely never seen. So I just want to thank all the viewers and listeners for your support. I want to thank David Knight for his great work on Father's Day uh, coming in. But I know it'll probably tell you, hey, as a father uh, of three children, um, and as a person who cares about his family, he wants to be here on Father's Day. So do I, uh, because this is what it's all about, is standing up for my children, my three children as well, and, and understanding that it's the animating contest of liberty. It's not a negative to, to work hard and make films and, and produce uh, reports and articles and research uh, in the quest for liberty. That is... The same motion is sucking air into your lungs and exhaling it. It's not work. It's life. It's what we're designed to do. And when we're not involved politically, when we're not involved culturally, when we're not involved and engaged spiritually and at every level, we become to atrophy. We become to fall apart. We begin to disintegrate, as I've said many times. It's like space travel to Mars. The best astronaut, once they get there, will still be a jellyfish and barely be able to walk because of not having gravity, even if they exercise with limited exercise on their way there. There's so many positive things about the modern world and conveniences today, but at the same time, we are losing our intellects. We are losing our rugged individualism. We are losing our primal energies. We are losing our basic instincts. And what's left of our instincts are being twisted and manipulated and turned against us. Rediscover your life force. Rediscover your will. Rediscover the, the, the desire to have a quest and to have a vision in your life and, and to be seeking your destiny. And you will find others that are seeking a greater human destiny as well. That's what it comes down to. So I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight in Austin, Texas. And I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, with a full broadcast with David Knight co-host with me as well. Infowars.com. The system's doing everything they can to block it. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and you just heard Alex Jones talking about, I think, one of the key issues before us right now. And that is this declaration of NATO saying that any kind of a cyber attack that they deem to be serious, that they deem to be coming from Russia, would be the basis for starting World War III. I find that incredibly chilling. And, of course, what are we talking about? We're talking about the shooting in Orlando. We're talking about the shooting in Britain. And that is very important. Both of these are very key because of the way they're being used. And we're going to be joined by uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is going to be joining us in the second hour to talk about, uh, he, he says he smells a rat in Orlando. And certainly there's a lot of suspicious stuff coming out of that, uh, the background uh, checks. And, and we're told that we have to surrender our freedoms. or We have to surrender the Sixth Amendment to these watch lists, right? The you know, Sixth Amendment says that you're going to have, uh, you're going to be confronted with the charges against you publicly. You're going to be able to answer them. You're going to be able to compel witnesses uh, in your favor. You're going to be able to confront the people who are accusing you of something. You're going to do this all speedily and in public. And if you don't have the means to represent yourself, you'll be given a, uh, a lawyer to help you with that process. Why did they have that? If we forget about the Star Chamber, the things that were done throughout tyrannical governments in the past that led to the creation of um, what happened at uh, Runnymede, the Magna Carta, as well as our Bill of Rights. They knew what happens when you do precisely what we're doing right now. It is a hallmark of tyranny. We've seen it in our lifetime throughout the communist totalitarian blocs. We had writers like Kafka warn us about that. A bureaucracy that accuses you of something. What? You don't know. You're just going to get the punishment. You don't know why you're being punished. You don't know what you're accused of. You just know that they're doing something to you. And in their secret...
secret proceedings, they've worked it all out. And they're satisfied that they can do whatever they want to to you. Now, I watch Loretta Lynch, Obama's newest attorney general, talking about how uh, we're not even going to give you a time limit on what we're going to do in terms of stopping people from being able to buy guns. You know, the we, we've got the NRA desperately trying to cling to some little remnant of the Second Amendment. So pathetic, so pathetic to see what they're doing along with Donald Trump saying, no, uh, we won't let people on this mysterious list uh, buy guns, but but well, let's put a limit on it. You, you can look at them for 72 hours and and uh, then they'll be able to buy guns if they're not really uh, not really a terrorist. She says, no, 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 no. We don't want to tie our hands that way. So the Constitution was meant to tie your hands, Loretta Lynch. You swore a, an oath to the, the Constitution. It was meant to tie your hands. It was not meant to expedite whatever you wanted to do as government. And so it's very concerning when we look at that. It's very concerning when we look at uh, these, uh, the shooting that happened in Britain. Yes, it was a horrific thing. A young mother, young wife was murdered. Do you find any of those circumstances suspicious? I certainly do. I certainly do. We talked about it on Friday. We'll talk about it a little bit more here. What has happened with this? And, of course, it has turned this around precisely one week before the shooting. And then this happens. Remember that this is nothing new. When we look at what's happening with this cyber uh, near declaration of war by NATO, that should really cause you to be concerned. I remember when I was a small child, I remember the Cuban Missile Crisis. I remember having the threat of a rapid nuclear war. I lived in Florida. This is all happening in Cuba. I remember as a kid in elementary school, it's like, you're going to have to bring your clothes to work because you may not be able to get home to your parents. We just lived down the block. Everybody in the 50s had the sword of Damocles hanging over their head, these nuclear weapons. And now we've got NATO putting that there again. And it's not a sword hanging by a thread over our heads. It's a nuclear war that is hanging by a thread over our heads. Understand how easy it is for the government to create a false flag cyber event that they then turn into a full-blown war. We see these types of things being done all the time. They make these declarations like they did in the NDAA. They say, we're going to have indefinite detention by the military without due process. We're going to pick you wherever we want, do whatever we want to you, hold you as long as we wish, and we're going to call that an act of, that's part of what we do during war now. Put that in the NDAA, not in the Constitution. They then come out and say, well, if we have a cyber attack that we deem secretly to be an attack, then we'll, we feel justified in starting a nuclear war. Let me talk about NATO and its false flags for just a moment here. We go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis, go back to JFK, and has now been declassified. Look it up yourself. Please do. Please educate yourself, unlike this idiot Gretchen Carlson, who we'll get to in just a moment from Fox News, who says that uh, the Second Amendment was written when before guns were invented. Okay, That's what she tweets out. She doubles down. She wants a gun ban for whatever she thinks assault rifles are. And, of course, uh, you know, assault rifles, as she defines them, whatever it is in her mind, uh, they should be taken because guns were not invented uh, when the Second Amendment was written. That's the blithering sellout idiot that is telling you, I think her program is called Real Story or something like that on Fox News. I mean, this is, this is what Fox News gives you, you know. You can, <laughs> you can put lipstick on a pig. You can even put a mini skirt on a pig, but they're still a pig if they're that ignorant or if they're lying to you like that, okay? Come on. She can't possibly be that stupid. She's simply lying to people. But let's go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. They desperately wanted to invade Cuba. They wanted to go to war with Cuba. We had uh, Admiral Limit Limnitzer who proposed Operation Northwoods, something very similar to 9-11. He said, let's get some passenger airliners. Let's fly them into buildings. Let's have terrorists blow up malls. And let's finger Cuba. Let's say that it's all Cuba's fault. That'll give us a pretense to go to war with them. President Kennedy's reaction to that was to fire him from being the chief for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And then that was shortly before he was executed, assassinated. Now, Lemitzer shows up in a few years as commander of NATO forces. It wasn't a career ender for him to propose a 9-11 type false flag, Operation Northwoods, so that they could have an excuse to go to war against Cuba. You know, history rhymes, doesn't it? <laughs> he goes to NATO, becomes NATO commander, 
And after the Second World War, they decided that they wanted to be able to equip people to fight a guerrilla war in case they were overrun by the Soviet Union. They wanted their underground to have that equipment in place right away. So they had pre-positioned a lot of stocks of weapons throughout Europe. At, in the 70s, we had uh, a lot of communists who were really gaining ground in Italy. Very popular. People were voting for communism. And the right and people like Admiral Lemnitzer were very concerned about that. And they came up with a process that's called Operation Gladio. With Operation Gladio, what they did was they had these people who were loyal to NATO created terrorist attacks attributed to them to the Red Brigade, kidnapping the Prime Minister of Italy and other things, and then blaming it on the communists. And eventually this was all unraveled because they went after the Prime Minister Aldo Moro. And it was shown in Italian court, but they don't talk about it here in the United States. So you can look that up as well. Please do. Please check me on that. Please check me on that. Check me on that. Check me on Operation Gladio. Check me on Operation Northwoods. And ask yourself, would our government do yet another false flag attack to try to start a war with Russia or with Cuba or to invade a country of their choice? And there's Operation Gladio on Wikipedia. It's all over the place, so you can look it up. So that's a very concerning thing. But let's go now to what they're trying to do in terms of taking our guns. Because, again, it's not Islam. It's not this guy who was a homosexual, had a lot of guilt, uh, nothing to do with his guilt. There's no cross in Islam to put your sin. He's got to earn his way. So he has to kill these people that he can't control his urges that he's been given this conflicted guilt about. So he does this, and we're going to talk to Paul Craig Roberts. He doesn't think that even happened. But let's go with the official story now. Uh, he shoots people, but it's not his fault. It's not Islam's fault. It's your fault if you're a gun owner. And you need to have your rights turned into privileges and perhaps curtailed. And so we've got people like Fox News' Gretchen Carlson. And she says, yes, I'm all for the assault weapon ban. And she says things on Twitter when people start to criticize her for this. She says, well, you know, same things that our new libertarian candidates say. Well, the Second Amendment was uh, only about deer hunting. You know, it only protected hunting rifles, things like that. But then she gets really crazy. She says that guns were invented after the Constitution was written. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 19th, 2016. I want to talk about Fox News' Gretchen Carlson now. She's made an amazing number of statements here about the Second Amendment, going back and forth with people on Twitter. And she's come out in, in favor of banning all assault weapons. And we're seeing this a lot from people on the right now. We're seeing everybody embrace this terror watch list, whether it is uh, Donald Trump or Barack Obama or uh, you name it. People on the left and the right, the NRA, coming in and embracing the terror watch list. The terror watch list, understand, destroyed the Sixth Amendment. It contradicts every aspect of the Sixth Amendment. It takes away all your protections, all the steps that they're supposed to go through that we just lump together and call it due process. I, I hate to just minimize it to that because people don't even think about all the steps of due process being able to know what the charges are you are against you being able to answer them in a speedy trial in public to question the witnesses against you to question to have witnesses in your favor that you bring in to have a defense attorney all of those things and then being found guilty before you are punished not having some kind of a pre-crime punishment given to you before any of those steps happen and yet we see people on the left and the right now all coming together from the NRA to Fox News to Barack Obama and his uh, so-called attorney general. And, and then we've got Gretchen Carlson. And she came out and said she supports the assault weapon ban. Uh, she actually put up a poll on her show, at a December 2015 poll that showed a majority of people uh, a supported assault weapon ban in that particular poll. You know what, Gretchen, I don't really care. Uh, one poll does not amend the Constitution, so change it. Change it or obey it. Um, she says, I'm with the majority today, and I'm going to take a stand. Well, you know what? You can get a poll to say anything you want to, Gretchen. And you can cherry pick the polls as much as you want. And one poll doesn't change the Constitution. We have a process for that, and uh, you want to ignore that process. You want to ignore what the Second Amendment says. And you want to not only ignore that, but you want to ignore what the Sixth Amendment says. And we've got a lot of people who are liberals. We've got the L.A. Times 
We've got the intercept. We've got a lot of people talking about, wait a minute, these watch lists are really dangerous. Anybody that, co that cares about the Constitution, that cares about individual liberty and due process, doesn't want to turn this into uh, some kind of a um, kangaroo court tyrannical government. Anybody that cares about any of that stuff, that understands anything about that, is really afraid of the watch list. You should be very afraid of the watch list as well. And once they start applying punishments to that watch list, the watch list is bad enough, already has some punishments applied to it, and they're just going to keep expanding this. It'll be guns first, but that's not where it's going to stop. So she says she's with the majority of people. When they confronted her on Twitter, she said this. She said, the fact that you're even using the Second Amendment as an argument against banning assault weapons shows me you're ignorant, says Greta Carlson. Don't you know, she said, that the Second Amendment was written before guns were even invented? Mm. See, this is a woman who is either profoundly ignorant about guns, about history, about politics, about the Constitution, and about individual liberty and the principles about it. She's profoundly ignorant of all of those things to the extent this is of, of a, somebody in elementary school. Or she's lying to people, thinking she can get away with this to control the narrative. She says, when she's talking to Breitbart News, she says at one point, I even asked myself, what was the use of trying to prove why assault rifles are bad to these people who think that the Second Amendment was written when they actually had guns, when they actually used them against their government, when all the muskets were state-of-the-art military weapons, okay? You know, say, oh, these are black powder rifles, yeah. There's more people dead in cemeteries all over North America killed by black powder rifle than by anything else, folks. And they're very deadly. They shoot a big bullet. And, and they can kill people left and right. Uh, but she says, I don't even know why I should be arguing with these people who don't possess the most fundamental knowledge of history. I felt like I was trying to teach nuclear physics to someone who's illiterate. <laughs> I would love to have a discussion with Gretchen Carlson on nuclear physics. That would really be a hoot. That would really be a hoot. I'm sure she knows a great deal about that. Just like she knows a great deal about history in the Second Amendment. She said, it seemed like every single person who replied to my tweet was under the impression that they were right and I was wrong. You mean because you think that the Second Amendment was written before people had guns, before guns were invented, and you don't understand there were military weapons? Look, you need to understand. Go back and look at your history, Gretchen. As a matter of fact, when they first started instituting the first elements of gun control, and I guess, and that's not counting uh, things like... Uh, the Jim Crow laws, where they took them away from the blacks because they're afraid of them. But when we talked about uh, the Supreme Court coming in with its first decision saying, oh, you can't have a sawed-off shotgun, what was their rationale? Their rationale was a sawed-off shotgun is not a military weapon. Therefore, it's not protected by the Second Amendment. You see how we flip that around now? Now, you can only have weapons that aren't military weapons. And even that was a lie. And they knew that in the 1930s. In the Civil War, you had several different cavalry units that instead of using a sword used sawed-off shotguns in their cavalry charges, okay? That's like I said, there's a lot of people uh, dead from black powder and pretty primitive arms. But it was about state-of-the-art military weapons. That's what the militia was about. We were never meant to be protected by a permanent standing army. We never had a permanent standing army until after World War II. We had a permanent officer corps, but we had a militia that was there to protect us. And if it was a real justified war, and people believe that, uh, you didn't need to draft them. You didn't need to hold a gun to their head to get them to sign up to defend their home, to defend the Constitution. And then she goes on to say, Gretchen Carlson says to Breitbart, I mean, I know the education in our country isn't the best in the world. Don't you think? She's exhibit A, isn't she? I'm, I'm wondering if Gretchen Carlson is the mother of Miss South Carolina. I've never seen a more empty-headed blonde in my life than Gretchen Carlson saying that the Second Amendment was written before guns were even invented. I don't even know how to respond to somebody like that. But, of course, she thinks that you're an idiot if you know anything at all because it doesn't – your knowledge doesn't match her. So, therefore, you must be wrong because she's a highly paid Fox News anchor. So, bow down and worship Gretchen Carlson and let them take away your Second Amendment just like they've taken away – uh, your Sixth Amendment. Let's play a clip today. We had on Fox News, we had Jeff Sessions, Senator Sessions, on Fox News Sunday, and he came on to talk about the gun ban, and I want you to hear what he has to say. 
how leaders react after a tragedy like the Orlando massacre. This is Chris Wallace. Gives people an insight into what kind of a leader or what kind of a potential president they would be. And I want to ask you about some of the things that Donald Trump has done in the last week, Senator. First, his comments the day after the tragedy that seemed to imply that President Obama is somehow sympathetic to the terrorists. Here he is. He doesn't get it, or he gets it better than anybody understands. It's one or the other, and either one is unacceptable. We're led by a man that either is 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 not tough, not smart, or he's got something else in mind. Question, do you know what that something else Trump refers to that he thinks that President Obama has in mind? No, I don't. I don't know what he's referring to there, but I do believe he is correct to raise the question that the policies of this administration, from going back to 2011 when we withdrew all our troops from Iraq and allowed ISIS to form and become an entity, probably would never have happened otherwise. It's certainly not spread as much as it has. So but, I but think. He, he, forgive me. Yeah. I, I just want to go through some what Trump said. He said either he doesn't get or he gets it better than anyone understands, he's got something else in mind. I mean, that certainly seems to imply that somehow he is sympathetic to radical Islam. No, I don't think he means that, but I think he's going, uh, I think he's criticizing him, President Obama, for going too far, uh, to not understanding the threat. Uh, the President and Hillary Clinton now says she wants to go from 10,000 Syrian refugees to 65,000 Syrian refugees. When Mr. Brennan, CIA director, says we can't do vetting... Yeah, we're going to talk about that when we come back. You know what? It is not an issue of gun control. This is an issue of border patrol. And if you're not going to be able to control your borders, if you have absolutely no interest in controlling your borders, then why would you take our guns away? We know precisely why. And uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to beat around the bush. All right, today we have a 15% sale off on Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12. We call it the Tim Kennedy Special. Because Tim, Kem Tim Kennedy, uh, UFC fighter, as well as Special Forces operator, these are his favorite supplements. And he is someone, as a professional athlete, he is finely tuned into his body. He knows what helped him. So we've got 15% off Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com. Limited time sale, as well as we still have the sale, but I don't know how much longer it's going to be for all Alexa Pure water filters. 20% off at InfoWarsStore.com. This is everything from our super high quality fed Lexa Pro Pure water filtration system all the way down to the shower filters. We appreciate your support, and this is the way we fund our operation. Giving you products to help yourself and your health as well as help this operation. Stay with us. We're going to be right back next hour. Paul Craig Roberts will talk about the Orlando shooting. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. Joining us in the next segment, we have... Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, and he has publicly stated that he believes that there's more to this Orlando shooting than they're letting on. I have looked at what's going on with Brexit, and I think it is absolutely amazing. I've never been more sure, more uh, sooner than I have with this uh, since I saw the uh, Michael Hastings assassination. Look at what happened last week. We had like about Tuesday, we saw the been gradual momentum building for the Leave campaign, for Britain to leave the European Union. And of course, this is a very key issue for them. A uh, very key issue for, and let me tell you what's at stake with it. L listen to some of these headlines. Uh, we've got Germany. They say they fret about their EU dominance if Britain were to vote to leave. Because, you know, they're using Britain as a beard to say, oh no, you don't have to worry about us. You know, we also got Britain as a counterbalance. At the same time, I saw this on a, on a car website. The Daily Mail, BMW urges voters to reject the Brexit to protect its investment in Mini and Rolls-Royce. And they started out the article by saying the German car giant behind two of Britain's most famous car-making brands, Mini and Rolls-Royce, has once more urged the UK to vote against Brexit. So you see, it's all the, the big politicians, it's the big corporations, especially the German ones. And I would have to say, if I was British, I'd have to look at this and say, you know what, yeah, Mini used to be a German company, not just a... Uh, uh, it used to be a, uh, a British company, not just a British brand. So did Rolls-Royce. Uh, the Germans have taken that over. And the Germans are taking over the rest of the economy here in Britain as well. Do you want financial independence in Britain? Do you want to be ruled not only by Germany, but by Brussels, by a bureaucracy that doesn't have your best interest involved? As we're talking about this, as you have this consolidation from the national to the international level, and from the international level of the European Union to go to a... 
kind of globalism that this transatlantic partnership will bring in, every time you go up another level, you lose so much about your individual liberty. Look at what ha what's happening in Sweden. They're saying, well, um, a British exit could lead to a Sweden exit. Brexit could lead to Swexit, they say. And it's because Sweden opened its door to Muslim immigration. Today, there, it's the rape capital of the world. Uh, that didn't happen in Japan or other places like that. That's a, an article from the Daily Caller uh, contrasting the two of those. Even the Federal Reserve is getting into the Brexit vote. The Federal Reserve says a Brexit is a factor in considering what it's going to do with interest rates. They're holding those to see what's going to go on. Uh, so we've seen this go over and over again. It, Washington Post says Britain's European Union vote could bring Cameron's government crashing down. So you got James Cameron's government could crash. The Federal Reserve would feel like they were impacted. The big German co companies, as well as multinational corporations that are pushing these things through, they feel like they would be affected. The banks, of course, the banks. Do you think these people who have trillions of dollars at stake would orchestrate the murder of a young MP in order to win this thing? <laughs> of course they would. And look at what's happened. June 13th, Leave takes a shocking 19-point lead in the Brexit poll. So they were ahead by 19 points. But then, as soon as this murder happened, as soon as the mainstream media puts out this narrative that uh, this was a hate crime by somebody who was connected to white supremacist groups in the United States, and that hit the very day it happened. Immediately, the Southern Pov Poverty Law Center, as well as some neo-Nazi group that I've never heard of that basically doesn't amount to anything. All of a sudden, they've got all the receipts from where this guy bought everything 15, 17 years ago, 1999, okay? All this stuff uh, surfaces. And we're told uh, that he was doing this as a hate crime. And now what do we see? We now see that Leave is behind by three points, 42 to 45. They're not allowed to talk about this. Only the people who want to remain talk about it. They wave the bloody shirt. They talk about how this is a crime of hate. And they have stunned the Leave people into silence. They won't defend themselves. Just like in the past, we had people who were honest gun owners who wouldn't stand up and say, you're not going to hang that crime on me. It doesn't have anything to do with that as a crime. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to talk about this as well as the shooting in Orlando and how that's being used with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to be talking to Paul Craig Roberts right now. He's joining us, and of course, he served as the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury to the Reagan administration. He earned fame as the co-founder of Reaganomics. He's a former editor and columnist for the Wall Street Journal and Business Week. He's written or co-written eight books, and you can find his website at paulcraigroberts.org. And I want to talk to uh, Dr. Roberts about these shootings and how we see them being used. Not only the Shooting in Orlando, which is now being used again for gun control. And we have people on both the left and the right at the uh, top who are joining into this and saying, yeah, we need to, we need, we've got these unconstitutional watch lists. Let's use them to apply pre-conviction uh, penalties to people. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And the first one we're going to do openly here is going to be take away your firearms rights. And then we have this massive vote coming up in England on Thursday, something that has a big impact on whether or not the European Union is going to unravel from the bottom. There were leaders from all of Europe's, as they like to put it in, Reuters, because, you know, if you want to support sovereignty and self-government, that makes you a far-right extremist, okay? They're always identified as far-right extremists. And you had people meeting uh, this last uh, weekend on Friday. You had leaders of Europe's parties, as they call it, their far-right parties, uh, talking about the European Union, urging Britons to free themselves from what they called heartless EU technocrats. And remember, it was Zbigniew Brzezinski that talked about how the world would be ruled by technocrats. And also came up with the three blocks that they would then consolidate into a global governance. They would have a European block, a North American block, an Asian block, and then they would pull them all together into a world government, created the Council on Foreign Relations, I'm sorry, not the Council on Foreign Relations, a Trilateral Commission, echoing those three areas, and now that's what we see with these trade agreements. Here's a quote from uh, Le Pen from France. She says, the fear-mongering of people like Juncker and Schultz cannot sway us. She said this to a crowd of about 2,000. They're worried that Britain might win back its freedom. We want Britons to set themselves free, and so do we. Uh, joining us now is Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Welcome. Thank you. 
Uh, what do you make of this situation in uh, the UK, first of all? Let's talk about that before we do Orlando. Uh, do you think that uh, Brexit is now going to fail? <clears throat> well, it's hard to know what will happen because uh, Obama went and told the British Prime Minister that they would not be allowed to leave. So mm -hmm. uh, he's been conducting, a, that is Cameron, uh, this fear campaign, Little England, how can we make it on our own? And uh, then there was this uh, a murder, which could have been arranged or could have been in it burnt, and that is being used, which is the important part, I suppose, the part we know for sure. It's being used against uh, the supporters of Brexit. Uh, yes. And the importance of uh, someone leaving the EU, England or anybody, is that the EU is uh, the way Washington controls Europe. It's much easier to control an unaccountable EU commission uh, than a whole bunch of separate governments. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and as the uh, professor, I think, was from Georgetown University uh, in 2000, discovered in the National Archive, uh, released CIA documents proving that the EU was a CIA creation. Uh, this was reported in the year 2000 uh, in England by Ambrose Evans Pritchard in the London Telegraph. And so the whole uh, uh, political reorganization, reinvention of Europe uh, is an American operation. And uh, it's very much in Washington's interest, both as a control mechanism, but also as the political uh, unity of NATO, because without NATO, uh, Washington doesn't have uh, foreign bases to exercise hegemony, mm -hmm. yes. particularly uh, the hegemony of Russia that uh, they're willing to risk uh, World War Three over. <laughs> yes. So, um, <clears throat> for a country to leave would begin, I think, the unraveling. Uh, not only of the EU, but of NATO. And if we got NATO unraveled, the chances of uh, the idiots in Washington uh, precipitating a war with Russia or Russia and China uh, would uh, be greatly reduced. Uh, people don't appreciate, but right now, uh, the tensions uh, between Russia and the United States due to Washington are far higher than they ever were during the Cold War. Uh, during my entire lifetime, the Cold War, every American president worked to reduce tension with the Soviets. You know, you had uh, Kennedy working with Khrushchev to reduce the tensions over the missiles we had in Turkey and the ones the Russians put in Cuba. Uh, you had uh, Nixon opening to China, uh, uh, starting the SALT talks, getting the Strategic Armed Limitations Treaty with the Soviets. Uh, <clears throat> the anti-ballistic missile treaty. You had Carter with SALT II. Uh, you had Reagan negotiating the end of the Cold War with Gorbachev. So all of the presidents until Clinton, but mainly Bush and Obama, worked to diffuse tensions. But now we, we have these amazing accusations, uh, provocations of the Russians. Um, <clears throat> it's an extraordinary thing to watch. And uh, the risk is very great of a, of a nuclear war. Yeah, exactly. The uh, situation with the declaration that a cyber attack that they tell us happened, and we have no way to know if that happened, that they say came from Russia. We're now being told by NATO that that would be grounds for a war with Russia, World War III. Yeah. So you see, <clears throat> that's why, I mean, the real importance of BRICS is that. It unravels NATO eventually, and therefore it removes the ability of the United States to coerce the Europeans into a conflict with Russia. Yes. And so this is the importance of it. It's not all the stuff they talk about. They never talk about what's important. <laughs> and, and so this is the real issue. You know, if somebody can get out and we can start unraveling the CIA creation, uh, then the chances of uh, human life continuing, maybe working things out so that we don't kill each other off, uh, 
they, those chances go way up. So that, to me, is what's important about the, the Brexit. Of course, um, it, it's kind of hard to see the British simply dissolving themselves as a nation and becoming Europeans. Because the, the English uh, system of law is totally different. You know, it was the English who uh, gave us uh, accountable government. It was the English who made uh, government accountable to law. It made law a shield of people rather than a weapon in the hands of the state. To see all that just disappear and uh, uh, British become some other entity, uh, that's it's kind of hard to, to imagine. Well, clearly I can see it happening even in America, Dr. Roberts, because we, we have this this watch list is, is clearly something straight out of the star chambers. We've been warned about this by numerous authors who've talked about dystopian totalitarian societies where you are charged and you don't know you're charged. Punishments are applied to you without you ever being present at the trial. And essentially that's what we're seeing now with these watch lists that they're trying to bring in. Well, it's really even worse. Uh, than that with the suspension of, of habeas corpus because they just pick you up and throw you in the dungeon and never give you any explanation. That's right. Or they can simply um, assassinate you on suspicion that you might be in some way connected with terrorism. And we've already seen that uh, flaunted in our faces through the NDAA, saying we can just pick you up, the military can pick you up, we don't have to give you any due process, we can hold you indefinitely, we can ship you to another country to tor torture you or, or whatever. I mean, this is... This is right in our face, and now they're doing it again, and it seems to me like they've got everybody at the top, both left and right, complicit in this as well. We've got to take a break, and we're talking to Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury during the Reagan administration, father of Reaganomics. He's going to be joining us again when we come back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host, live in Austin. Joining us on the line is Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. And of course, he was the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury to Ronald Reagan. He's the co-founder of Reaganomics. His website is paulcraigroberts.org. There you can find out about his most recent book, How America Was Lost, as well as follow his writings. Before we get back to Dr. Roberts, I want to tell you that we do have, we've extended the sale on Alexa Pure water filters, the 20% off at InfoWarsStore.com. That's all of the Alexa Pure water filters from the super high quality gravity fed Alexa Pure Pro water filtration systems, the really big ones that you see there on the screen, down to the shower filters. And of course, that's a great way to get chlorine that's been put in your water. If you're on a city water system, get that out of your shower. That's one of the reasons why the shower filter is very important. Uh, now is the time to stock up on the lowest prices. And of course, the Alexa Pure filtration system removes up to 99.9999% of bacteria, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. So you can get it 20% off of all the Alexa Pure systems from the largest down to the smallest right now at InfoWarsStore.com. We also have the Tim Kennedy special at InfoWarsLife.com. That's 15% off Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12. These are the products that Tim Kennedy uses in his Special Forces and UFC training. That's why we call it the Tim Kennedy Special. These are the ones that he said uh, when, as he was talking to Alex. He said, I really can feel it as a professional athlete when I've used these supplements, particularly Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, Secret 12. He ran them through uh, the UFC bureaucracy, and they said, yeah, there's nothing in those that we would uh, ban from any of our athletes using, so that's, that's safe for you to use. Uh, you can read the hundreds of five-star reviews, and right now you can get 15% uh, off those three products, Brain Force, Secret 12, and Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com. That's the Tim Kennedy special. Let's go to uh, Dr. Roberts uh, now. Dr. Roberts, we were talking, and you mentioned in the last segment that one of the key reasons for Britain to leave that is important for all of us worldwide is to... Put some controls on NATO. NATO is getting very aggressive. We've just seen that they said a cyber attack. If they can identify it and tell us that they were attacked somehow and that they identify it as Russia, then they say they're justified to start World War III. We've seen this kind of aggression against Russia as they move into the Crimea as well. We, the same people who say, uh, oh, we're all for Ukraine uh, seceding from Russia, but Crimea can't secede from Ukraine. I mean, that, that should tell people something right there, shouldn't it, Dr. Roberts? Well, it's just part of um, the neoconservatives asserting uh, well, uh, world hegemony. So uh, that's a very serious problem for peace. 
because uh, the Russians and Chinese are not going to submit to being American vassals mm -hmm. like the European countries and Japan and Australia and Canada. So it's a recipe for conflict with two nuclear powers. There's no prospect whatsoever of the United States or NATO uh, or both uh, engaging Russia or China, much less both countries, simultaneously in conventional war. Uh, even the NATO command has said that if, uh, if, war, if a conventional war broke out with Russia, Russia would win it in 60 hours, and Europe would simply be overrun, and that the NATO is incapable of doing anything about that. So the war would be nuclear, and there's no winners of that war. Uh, life would simply cease. So uh, it's very uh, important in that sense that the political organization and military organization that Washington has set up uh, and for its uh, imperial uses for expanding its empire, opposing its empire, uh, be broken up. And so that's why it's important for Britain to leave, because I think it would begin an unraveling, particularly now that the EU uh, is used by the richer northern countries, the Dutch, the Germans, uh, to loot the poor southern countries like uh, uh, Portugal and Greece, uh, Spain and Italy. Mm -hmm. So you probably have... They call uh, them the pigs, don't they? <laughs> Portugal, Italy, uh, let's see, what was the other? I Ireland, Greece uh, and Spain, they call them pigs. That's their acronym uh, for it. That's so, a contempt. Well, it's, uh, it's much more than that. Uh, because what uh, they do, they they go to somewhat corrupt governments and say, hey, how, bar, borrow all this money, and then you can buy all these things from us, and here's a bag full of money for doing it. And yes. So that's how, that's how Greece got indebted. You know, here's and we've seen that for a very long time from the uh, IMF and the World Bank under McNamara. He would go into these third world countries and he would loan them money that they would use not for building infrastructure or anything that would help them to uh, make themselves wealthier, but to create a welfare state. And people accuse them of being rent seekers. And now we see them doing that in Europe. What we This is a long pattern, something they've been criticized for decades for doing, but nobody ever stopped them from doing it throughout Central and South America, the developing countries, and now they're doing it in Europe to take away their money as well, aren't they? Well, they get them indebted so they can loot them, mm -hmm. so to sell off their national assets to uh, first world corporations at pennies on the dollar. Like the Greeks are forced to sell off their municipal water systems, their ports, their protected national islands. Uh, they're forced uh, not to have a welfare system, but to dismantle it so that they can pay the banks. For example, the Greek pensions have been slashed to the bone, public employment slashed to the bone, uh, medical care, education, and that money instead is transferred to the Dutch and German banks. So, you know, the, the whole process was described some years ago by John Perkins in uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. So what, what we were saying is that with uh, the EU now turning on its own members, you know, the Greeks, the Greeks, the Irish, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Italians, uh, there's plenty of reason for the system to unravel. So if uh, uh, a major member were to vote to exit, such as Britain, that would probably be the death knell of the EU, and uh, <clears throat> that would, in turn, lead to the unraveling of NATO. And therefore, this would remove the ability of Washington uh, to cause conflicts. Uh, it, it would tend to leave Washington more isolated, unable to control the other part of the Western world, which serves as a cover for Washington's aggression. So that is the real most important reason for getting uh, England out. I don't think England would be permitted to, to leave. I suspect that if the boat was to come out to leave, uh, it would uh, simply not uh, be permitted. In fact, I doubt they would permit a boat to come to that conclusion. That's right. That's right. The boat. 
We're going to continue to talk to uh, Dr. Roberts when we come back. We're going to talk about the aftermath of the shootings, both in the U.K. and in Orlando, and his analysis of both of those events and the impact that they could have. We'll be right back with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. I'm David Knight. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, the former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury during the Reagan administration, co-founder of the Reaganomics, and we had an article of Dr. Roberts back on uh, June 14th, beginning of last week, saying it will be impossible to get any truth out of the Orlando shooting. I wanted to follow up with Dr. Roberts and get his comments on the many strange things that have come to light out of Orlando, as well as, of course, how it is being used to say that we have to take everybody's gun rights, not just this guy. And we can't do any background checks on the people that Obama is bringing in by the tens of thousands. No, we're going to take away your Second Amendment rights to protect yourself, to defend yourself against the government. Your comments, Dr. Roberts. Well, I don't think we know what happened. And that's what should stun us. Um, because if you have 103 people shot, there has to be massive evidence all over the place. Uh, yet we've not seen uh, videos of uh, the numerous ambulances, the numerous emergency uh, medical technicians that would be tending to 103 casualties, half of them dead, half of them wounded, according to reports. Uh, I challenged my readers, of which there are a great number, uh, to help me to prove the official story, and we found we were unable to uh, find any evidence for it other than statements of, of government officials. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't see the massive evidence that would be apparent if such a mass shooting actually occurred. So what I see in this is the same sort of pattern I see in, in other instances. There's a story prepared, and the minute the announcement of the event is given, the story is given. Mm -hmm. So we get the explanation with the announcement of the event. So somehow the government knows instantly who did it and all of that. So, but in lieu of bodies, we get photographs and list of names. That's uh, true. That's true. And of course, now we're now finding out that the psychiatrist who supposedly evaluated him so he could work for G4S, so he could get the statewide firearms license, she's now saying, I wasn't, uh, that they put my signature on that form. I wasn't even in Florida there. I wasn't even working in Florida at the time. And yet that form was used to get him the, the license that he needed to work for the private security firm, the largest in the world, G4S. Then it was used to get his statewide firearms license when he was being investigated by the FBI all these different times, and they kept shutting this down. One of the times, the FBI director uh, Comey says, well, you know, he was also holding this license from this large private security firm. So all of this stuff is built on this house of cards, and yet these people tell us that they're going to uh, vet everyone for firearms, even though we see the disaster that they did here, even if you believe their official story. It's starting to unravel around the uh, around the edges as far as this phony background check. And, of course, a watch list is nothing but a background check. But they don't even want to do background checks on the people that they're bringing into this country. So the whole thing is based on a lie. It's based on smoke and mirrors, isn't it? The conclusions that they offer us. Well, uh, my point is, uh, how is it we can't find out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that, that's really what should puzzle people is how hard it is to get any kind of definite handle on it. Um, I see uh, from reports that the media flocked to the hospital, but only to interview one of the victims, uh, this guy Angel, whatever his name is. So you have all the press interviewing one victim. Where are the other 52? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like uh, Sandy Hook. We get... Uh, photos and list of names. We don't see any body bags. We don't see any ambulances, any emergency medical technicians. We, the, the whole thing, um, and, and what's so astonishing is that, uh, is that they feel confident to pull these things off over and over and over, and people seem to be uh, okay that all they get are government statements. They don't and they're repeated endlessly by the media. We don't ever get any investigation. 
and nobody ever shows any real evidence. There are always crisis actors on the scene. And what you see is a population that's just so gullible, it has no chance of protecting its liberty or its gun rights or, or anything else. I said some time ago, I pointed out some time ago, David, that of all of the provisions in the Bill of Rights that make law a shield of the people, the only remaining one is the Second Amendment. And That's right. the Second Amendment is inconsistent with the police state, which we now have. The Congress seems to be okay with the police state. The bulk of the population is okay with it. The legal community is okay with it. Uh, we continue to have the violation of habeas corpus, due process, privacy, endless spying without warrants. All of these things are not only unconstitutional, they're illegal under U.S. statutory law, and yet nothing is done. There's been just this acceptance of a police state in order to save us from terrorism that we really don't even know if it exists or not. I mean, what yeah. all the terrorist events... Uh, seem to be uh, FBI stings, you know, the FBI admits, oh, the public was never in danger. We caught them before they could do anything, but we all also get the story that the FBI organized them in this fake terrorist attack so they could be arrested. And we find out the real reason the FBI does this is that Congress gave a supplemental appropriation of seven bi uh, several billion dollars a year for the FBI to be proactive and prevent attacks. And so they are, as there are no real attacks, they have to go out and organize them so they collect this several billion dollars. It's kind of like the watch list. We were talking about this on Friday, and, and Rob Dew came in with a list of the, all these people. Listen to all the people. We had a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, an 18-month-old toddler. All these people were on the no-fly list. Right. They were told they could not fly. So we're getting... False positives. You had uh, Ted Kennedy, who was on the no-fly list as he was a senator. Uh, you got all of these different things happening. And yet we're told that thou not, that needs to now be a checklist to take away people's rights. And even the FBI director said from a pragmatic standpoint, he told the uh, attorney general, uh, Loretta Lynch, he said, uh, you're going, if we really are investigating these people, you're going to alert them to the fact that they're being investigated by saying, no, you can't buy a gun. So he says, even from a pragmatic standpoint, it doesn't uh, wash, but it doesn't wash from a constitutional okay. issue. David, there's nobody to investigate. All right. The whole thing is a hoax. All right. So yeah. the, the, and the FBI knows it. Right. But uh, We're just trying to reach out to the people. <laughs> <laughs> have one foot in the official story and one foot in reality. I mean, we had, Dr. Roberts, we had Gretchen Carlson, I don't know if you saw this or not, on Fox News, and she comes out in favor of an assault weapon ban. When she was questioned and people came after her on Twitter, she made the amazing statement that the, well, first of all, the thing everybody says, well, it doesn't have anything to do with hunting weapons. But she said the Second Amendment was written when we didn't even have firearms. It was written before firearms were invented. You stupid people, I don't even know how to deal with you. You're so ignorant. <laughs> yeah, well, why did it say the right to bear arms? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I guess that was slingshots or uh, crossbows or something in her mind. I don't know what she thought that was. Well, uh, whatever she says is, is really not what's important. Uh, what's important is the uh, lack of skepticism on the part of the public, yes. of official statements. Uh, and this enables the government to pull off the most transparent kinds of uh, operations. Uh, it enables the media never to investigate. I mean, why didn't the media go to the morgue or to the hospital? Or why, if, if we've got 103 casualties, there've gotta be ambulances all over the place. Why don't they show them? Uh, where are the uh, emergency medical teams? Where nothing is ever shown, and the media never wonders, or asks, or says, well, that's one thing we do need, and that is more skepticism. We need to say, uh, show me the money, show me the evidence. We need to always question anything the government puts out there, especially when they're coming after our individual liberty. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, again, his website is paulcraigroberts.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in this last segment of our Sunday show. I want to talk about what's going on with this, what I believe is a clear false flag in the Brexit vote and what they're really trying to put out here as they're being labeled 
as uh, racist and far-right extremists. They are not. And I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. Before we get to that, I want to tell you about our specials. We have the Alexa Pure water filters now 20% off at InfoWarsStore.com. That's everything from our largest systems down to the shower filter. And of course, you can remove 99.9999% of bacteria, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. You can even filter water from lakes, rivers, streams, wells, and of course, the dirtiest of all, your municipal water system. <laughs> it's, it's great for everything. That's our high-end, high-quality, gravity-fed Alexa Pure Pro water filtration system all the way down to the shower filters. It will get out things like chlorine that's in your uh, municipal water. That's 20% off all the water filters from Alexa Pure uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. Also, we have the Tim Kennedy special, 15% off Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12. You'll find that at InfoWarsLife.com. This is the time right now to stock up on our top products for 15% off at InfoWarsLife.com, the products that Tim Kennedy uses in his advanced training. This guy works out like three hours a day. And he is in tune with his body. And he says, these are the products that I saw the biggest change very quickly. Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, Super 12. We put those together, 15% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, going back to Brexit, and of course, now we're just a few days away. And there will be more memorial services tomorrow for the young mother and wife who was murdered last week. One week exactly before the Brexit vote. And as I pointed out earlier in the show, if you look at all the things that are involved, I mean, we're going to have David Cameron is going, his government will fall. He will lose his position as prime minister. The Germans, the politicians, as well as the multinational corporations are not happy about Britain leaving. They want that counterbalance to their power, a perceived counterbalance to their power. And as Dr. Craig Rob, Paul Craig Roberts was talking about, the real thing that we shall be concerned about is what's going on with NATO. As we see NATO pushing its way into the Ukraine and the Crimea, trying to create a conflict, and then coming out this last week, talking about how a proven cybersecurity threat, we'll have to take their word for it, just like we do all of these attacks. We'll have to take their word for it. There won't be any bodies. There won't be anything that we can see. They'll just tell us what we need to know for this, and then they will start World War III with Russia. You know, it was the fear campaign that the people who want to remain in the European Union were pushing. They were saying, hey, there's going to be war in Europe if you leave. There's going to be an economic collapse. There's going to be rising mortgages. Yeah, I'm sure they will play with it. You know, they had the LIBOR scandal, the London interbank rate uh, where they were rigging that. That's what all your variable rate mortgages are based on. Every year when your mortgage comes up for reevaluation, it's that LIBOR rate. These people were playing games with that to make money hand over fist. They got caught doing it. They didn't go to jail. Got a long list of bankers who, quote unquote, committed suicide. We showed you at least three of those. Talked about that last week. One in great detail, how he was pushed out of a window, looks like. Um, they found him on his back in the street. He had uh, he was there for 20 minutes before he died. A couple of guys walk out of the building where he had uh, fallen for three stories. And they say, hey, if you're jumping, you're not going to land on your back, really. Uh, you're going to land on your front. Okay, but he landed on his back. They had surveillance cameras, interestingly enough. And that's the new evidence that came out. They said he was beaten on the face, the front of his head. And these two guys in suits walk out shortly after he falls. They walk over, they say a couple of things to him, and then they calmly walk off. They don't call for help. A suicide note written to his wife where he writes her name in a way that he'd never written her name, never called her Tony. All these things happened as his bank was involved in a massive scandal. He was the scapegoat for this. So you don't think these people will kill somebody for trillions of dollars? They've killed for a lot less than that. A lot less than that. And so when we look at all this, and we look at how they're playing this, I and mean, just look at this corporation here. Look at Uber. We've had this fight here in Austin about background checks. They couldn't come to an agreement, so the city of Austin said, hey, we do background checks on taxis. We're going to do them on Uber as well because we've had some people here as well as other cities where uh, you've got a taxi driver that works for Uber. Let's call him, they call him an Uber driver, not a taxi driver. It's same thing. You get into their car, these people are criminals, and they're not doing proper background checks on them. And we can't see those background checks. We've had a lot of situations where women have been raped or uh, physically assaulted. We want to have background checks. They say, we put background checks on us, we leave. So they shut down all of the Uber transportation here in Austin. And now Uber is coming out and saying, you know what? If you do background checks, it's racist. It's racist. You're racist against Hispanics and blacks if you do background checks. Because, you know, it's racist if you have to produce 
photo ID to vote. Anytime they don't want you to do something, they always play the race card, don't they? Always play the race card. Very interesting. Even though the taxi industry has to do that, no background checks for Uber, okay? Uh, you can ban guns and say, we got to have a background check, but no background checks for the people coming in over the borders. Only when it's something that they want will they push for these types of checks. But if it's something they don't want, they'll say, oh, we don't need that. All right, so let's talk about what's going on with Brexit. And again, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. There was eight points that were out by Boris Johnson, who is trying to encourage people to leave the European Union so they can be free, so they can have their sovereignty again, so they can be more prosperous. Because the European Union is a nanny state parasite at the very least, okay? And, of course, as Dr. Roberts pointed out, he didn't talk about the issue of NATO trying to create a war, but uh, we'll talk about some of the economic issues. And let me ask you this. Does this sound like far-right extremism, or is this just level-headed common sense? Here's some of his reasons. 350 million pounds per week more to spend as Brits wish with their priorities. In other words, you spend it on your welfare state or your national health care, whatever. And remember, we're talking about pounds, 350 million pounds, multiply that by about one and a half for dollars. So that's about a half a, uh, a billion dollars a week that they would have that they're currently sending to the European Union. You could take back control of your borders. You could stop the huge pressure of immigration on public services. He said, number three, we'd be taking back control of our democracy. We'd be able to set our own laws and not be prisoner to the 2,500 EU regulations coming out every year from Brussels that cost us 600 million pounds per year to comply. Number four, we'd be able to do free trade deals with the rest of the world, even with America, he said. Number five, we'd be able to get from the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, you know, kind of like our Supreme Court is imposing all kinds of uh, things on us that are not legal. He says it's increasingly arbitrating in questions over which we never thought it would have any power. Sounds like our Supreme Court, doesn't it? Like human rights, like asylum, like the right of the child. Number six, he said, if we stay in the European Union, they will continue to drag ever further towards a federal structure in which the UK should frankly have no part in supporting something called the euro. Okay. Number seven, all the countries that have done really well in the OEC in the last few years have been outside of the single market. And there he is. This is what I'm summarizing this quickly from. And finally, number eight, he says... Fundamentally, we'd be believing in Britain again. We'd be able to take back control and do things our way, and I think it'd be a galvanizing thing for British democracy, for our economy, to take back control June 23rd and vote leave. Now, they were ahead 19 points before this shooting. In the aftermath of that shooting, we have seen the people who are rational, there's no arguments in here that are racist. There's nothing here that is hateful. It's all about economics. It's all about individual freedom. It's about having control of their country and their destiny. Those are not things anybody should be ashamed of, but they've been shamed and portrayed as hateful people. Look at this headline from Zero Head. Jerp's message, those who oppose EU membership are violent. That's what they, they've been doing since then. So since this happened, everybody said, well, we're going to just stop talking about leave and we're going to stop talking about remain, those two issues, because somebody said that he said Britain first as he killed her. And there were people on site who disputed that. But because of that, the people who want to remain in the European Union have been holding her up in memorial and talking about the hatred that killed her for several days now. And the other people have been put into silence, have been totally silenced. And we see that happen in the United States as well. That's something for us to remember. Don't ever let them falsely accuse you and put you into silence. And now we've seen the leave drop by 22 points. Now, one of the things Dr. Roberts was talking about that looks very much like a false flag. Whenever we see these false flags and immediately they find the guy, immediately they have the motive, immediately they know everything about this guy, you should question that. You should say, that looks suspicious. And that's precisely what happened in this case. And where did that information come from? You know, it's the United States who created the European Union, along with some elitist in Europe. They want to keep NATO together. They want to keep the European Union together. And it was from the United States that we learned all this information about how he was a white supremacist from no one other than the Southern Poverty Law Center. These people who are always out there pushing this narrative of racism and hate. And so immediately, immediately as this happened, we have the actual documents going back to 1999 from this little tiny organization that doesn't even have any subscription membership or anything and since 2013. The guy that's there now, Special Forces Operator, he says, hey, this is such a mess. Uh, we had no money. I couldn't find any records. But boy, they didn't have any problem finding this record from this guy. And yet everybody who knew him 
said he was a gentle soul. He never attacked anybody. His brother, who was half black, said he was incredibly gentle.